Okay. Parent is meeting to discuss eligibility tomorrow. Um, school is saying that the child does not meet criteria in several areas to receive services or supports in academic because scores on their evaluations are too close to her IQ. Now, if they refuse an independent education evaluation, which is an IEE, what is the next step? Now, first of all, for those of you who don't know, um, we're supposed to sort of trying to be getting away from what is known as the discrepancy standard. Uh, and that's where they take your child's IQ and uh, an achievement test and then come up with a what's known as um, a predicted achievement, which is where uh, based upon your child's IQ level and based upon the achievement, the pre like where your child should be predicted to be uh, functioning at. It's already been shown to be not that reliable. All right. And that's why we're trying to get away from that and especially mentioned in Every Student Succeeds Act as um, uh, a mechanism that isn't that reliable. And that's why uh, many of the states have come up with secondary, even third options uh, to try to throw that net out to uh, find more children um, eligible. That's the intent, of course. Now, whether that happens or not, uh, we have a case currently where the school doesn't use the discrepancy model, uses the patterns of strengths and weaknesses, but what a sneaky little school system. Um, we have two, ki two, two kids that were found ineligible, but yet the school system in finding them ineligible, uh, even though they did meet the discrepancy standard, but under the new regulations with that, they don't have to use the discrepancy, even though using the discrepancy, the child did qualify because they used patterns of strength and weaknesses. Well, in the eligibility, uh, it, it stated that uh, the, the team could find uh, neither strengths nor weaknesses. So um, we're going to test that and see where it goes. It's absolutely ridiculous. But like I said, you can abuse anything that is well-intentioned. Water, we need it for life, right? But you can also use it to kill people or torture them. So it doesn't matter what it is. Anything that is designed for good intent eventually by bad people can be used in the opposite. That's why you always keep your eyes open. You don't trust anybody. Um, but that's what that is, is what they're saying is, is that she, she's not scoring within uh, that discrepancy, which is typically 16 points or more. There needs to be a separation. Um, and so that's why they're saying that she doesn't qualify. Now, you can sit there and request an independent education evaluation. Um, and at that point, if the school system, they have two options. They can either approve it, and they need to do this expeditiously. They can't just sit on it because there's been many findings by the federal courts that schools can't just sit there and delay a determination because it's a real easy determination. You either fund the independent education evaluation or you file due process against the parent to defend your own evaluations. All right. Um, the parents would still be entitled to go out and get an expert to help them uh, if the school system decides that they wanted to uh, file against you to defend their evaluations. That's sort of stupid for schools to do because the cost of defending your own evaluations, risky, highly risky. And then on top of that, uh, it costs a lot of money to go to due process, all right? There are schools, some school systems out there that believe that that's where they need to draw the line with parents or you know, they're gonna lose uh, you know, control and it's gonna be anarchy. Um, but that's, that's not the majority of the schools. The majority of schools will fund an independent education evaluation. Now, if they approve your independent education evaluation request, then most state departments across the country will recommend uh, that, that the school system have a list of recommended providers, meaning this is who's in the community. You are not mandated to, to use anybody on that list. They're, they're, that list is provided to parents who, let's say, has, they have no clue uh, what occupational therapist uh, is in the community or a speech language pathologist or um, a clinical psychologist. 
because they've never used one before for their child. So that's what those lists are intended to do is help parents um, understand what the available resources and professionals are in the geographic boundary for their school system or beyond. Okay, so you get to use whoever you deem um, uh, worthy to do that. And, it, and you can ask for an independent education evaluation in every individual area that the school system assessed in. All right, so you can ask for, uh, let's say, a neuropsychological or a psychological evaluation because the school system did an IQ, cognitive, and an achievement battery. Okay, that would be your right there. If they also did a speech and a language evaluation, you would have an, a, a separate right to request an independent speech language. Same thing with OT, same thing with PT. If the school system did an evaluation in those areas, it would put you in a position to ask for an independent evaluation after they're done with their evaluation. That includes in behavior, functional behavior assessment, any kind of assessments uh, specific for behavior would put you in a position to, to uh, uh, make a request for an independent evaluation, okay? Now, if you choose to use your own professional or use a, a professional not on their list, then the only thing that the school system can do to limit you is what's called an agency criteria. And an agency criteria is very minimal with regards to the power a school has to deny you um, whoever you would like to use. They, they can establish a geographic boundary, let's say uh, one to 200 miles uh, from the, the Board of Education. They can sit there and say, well, they need to be licensed in your state uh, and they need to charge the, uh, the, the going community rate for that kind of evaluation. Those are all reasonable limitations. And most, most professionals will fall within that. Now, is there ever opportunities where you can go outside of those agency criteria? Absolutely, we've done it before. With very complex cases and with, um, with professionals that are hyper-specialized, um, we've, we've had to go, I've had a case in Alabama where we had to go all the way uh, into New England, uh, I believe it was either New Hampshire or Vermont, to get the professional uh, and the school system had to pay for them to fly in and provide the evaluations and the recommendations to the team and then continue to follow up via Skype or Zoom uh, to be able to provide su continuing support to the IEP team. Um, but that's where you would be. Now in this particular situation, that's what you would need as a neuropsychological or clinical psychologist to redo the IQ and achievement battery to see whether the school system was correct in their numbers, okay? Um, and hopefully they approve it. 